So today, what we will do is we'll start with as per as per your topic for your fifth, uh, fourth unit. We'll be starting SNMP. So first thing that we need to know is why we need SNMP. Okay. So as I told you, it is used to manage the different objects or devices that we have in your network. So your network consists of so many things that help us to transfer data very fast and uh, it reaches the person whom we intend to reach. Okay, for example, if I send a mail to one of your class students, okay, by giving this mail ID, so that should reach only to that particular student. Or if I am sending any message, okay, whether it is a, a messenger or whether it is WhatsApp, so I am sending a message to a particular person, then that particular person should only receive the message and not someone else. So these things are to be uh, looked upon when you work with the network because so for example, if you take any military operation or any information that is uh, regarding with the government of India or any other government that we take into. So what we do is information that is transferred should reach only the uh, intended person that it has supposed to. So it should not be like I send a message to person one and it gets reached to person three. That should not be the thing. So then how we can do it? So we need to manage the different network engine or the different network components that we have in your um, system. Okay, so these things are to be managed. So who will manage it? So we need a governing body that will manage all the components that are available in our network. So simple network management protocol will govern the different things or different components that we have in our network. So as we told you, SNMP is a simple network management protocol that is referred as internet management. So as we told you, when you transfer something over the network, so we have all these fraud things going on uh, by asking for your OTP and asking for your uh, banking details. So first, as when these things happen, we didn't have much knowledge how it is going on. So once after these came into uh, the news, people got um, got to know about these things and they are now very much uh, confident that they should not transfer, they should not uh, say things that bank doesn't ask for. The bank never asks for your OTP, your um, card number, your CVV number, anything. So you should be uh, secure in such a way that you don't go into these kind of fraud. So once in a social website, uh, I was just scrolling and I saw uh, information about how ONX, okay, I don't know how much of you, how many of you have uh, been aware of this. So what you do is a person has just put a camera for sale on OLX. Someone is trying to buy his product. He says that I am from Indian Army. Okay, so he's showing some ID card, all those things. So whenever you try to say that it is an Indian Army, we feel the pride and we say that, okay, that person might be a genuine person by giving, by showing his ID card. So what happens is he has, he has got some kind of... Uh, uh, intuition that this person is not actual because he didn't bargain for the money. Okay, he didn't do any bargain. He didn't see the product that is the camera that he's selling for. So what he does is he just sells. Uh, he says that I will give you a QR code. Okay, you just scan this QR code and you will receive the advance money that I am supposed to pay. Okay, just after uh, thinking that why I should give you a why. Scan a QR code. I will just give my account number. You send the uh, money to my account number. He says, but the person on the other hand, he doesn't accept. He says that I'll give you only QR code. So once he scans the QR code, first time he has received whatever amount that he said. The second time when he scans the QR code, whatever money he had in his account that was wiped out. Okay, so the person saying that he is from Indian Army said that he is at is and uh, posting where he cannot come in person and view the product. So this is how things are going on. So be careful when you sell anything online and when you are using any online or shopping cart something. So be careful. So just these are one thing that I uh, came across. I just thought to share with you. So we should be careful. So internet has got both advantages and the disadvantages. 
so we need to be careful and not to fall a prey for these kind of people so snmp is used to manage your internet okay it is an internet management protocol so it works with um the tcp ip protocol that we already are familiar with so it manages the uh, elements that are in your network using your tcp ip and it can also manage the network components which are not available in your tcp with the help of proxy so as you remember i told you in the previous class that uh, managed object is nothing but the components that we have in the network so things that are manageable in your network we call them as managed objects so these managed objects are governed or monitored by snmp so next one is this is a simple example okay so what what we have here is we have a network okay a network which is managed by some uh, components so we have nms network management system at the top so you can see that you have this nms network management system so every component that you have in your network are identified by a unique id which we call it as ip address so ip address is a unique id that helps you to identify the different components or different objects that we call as in your network so this nms network management system will have an agent okay management agent which govern all the net, uh, components that are connected to this particular network okay you can have a management agent for one particular network so this management agent will govern the components that are available here so on the client side okay on the client side i have this hub okay two different uh, systems that are connected through ethernet okay through your lan it is connected so you have this router which helps it to connect to the outside network okay so the outside network is your nms so what happens here is here you can see this ip address right 172.16.46.0 so this is the ip address of the lan through which these systems are connected hub 1 and hub 2 okay hub 1 and hub 2 can be any uh, device so this 172.16.46.0 is the ip address of this lan so next we have hub 1 whose ip address is 172.16 46 next we have up to whose ip address is 172 16 and 3 so this is how you identify the components that are available in your network so when you are connecting these things okay if an nms that is your network management system wants to know anything about these uh, devices then it can access the mib okay management information such that these uh, data about that device is available so this is the different uh, net uh, different networks that we have so this is the ip address of your nm okay 192.168.252.110 so this nms will have a management agent which will manage the different components that are available here so here the components that we have is a two hub and one router so which is getting connected to the nms this is just one single network so this router is used to help to connect your outside uh, network that is to connect your nms with this particular lan network so you have only three devices that this nms is governing this nms is uh, taking care of only three uh, these three devices a hub sorry two hub and then one router if this nms wants to know anything about this okay whether it is in working condition or whether it is Uh, in um, or to say in service mode or whatever thing, it is just query. Okay, it is just query. Give a query, and it gets all the details that are required about this network. Okay, so this is one single network which is governed by your NMS. The next one is so this is what is the uh, details that we saw. So before this one minute.
So we need to know the case study. Okay, that the author was uh, telling about, and it was very interesting. So how the networks are managed as different systems in the real world. Okay. So first thing is AT and T network management center. Okay, we have uh, we have already uh, heard that term AT and T. So how they manage the network here is. What they do is they have uh, this author, your Mani Subramaniam, who is the author of the book Telecommunication Network Management. He has just narrated how he went to different uh, network management systems and how they are monitoring the network. So when he went to AT and T, he saw that it has got um, a big screen. Okay, he has a, the center has got a big screen where all the components that are available. Okay, whatever it is, whether it is a hub or a switch. Or a router, or uh, a printer, any kind of devices that are connected over the internet. So this is about the uh, internet facilities that they have in the United States. Okay, an AT&T uh, network center at the United States. So it has got all the components that are available. So what, how they are monitoring us? Their components are indicated by a color green. Okay, which means that the network is running properly. Okay, the devices are working properly. Suppose if there is any problem with any of the devices, the color will be either yellow or red. So yellow means that it is a slightly a difficulty in uh, connecting with the network. So red means that it is completely dead. Okay, you cannot do anything about it. So green color indicates that the system is working perfectly, and yellow and red indicate that there is some problem with the uh, comp that particular component in your network. So how they are managing this? It will do healing on its own. Okay, it will do the uh, troubleshooting on its own without the intervention of a human being. It is able to do uh, self healing of the components. So the components uh, that is the management agent is programmed such that uh, network components are managed on their own. Okay, so that is about the AT and T network management center. Second one is the CNN World Health uh, Headquarters. So what they do is they do the um, management of the system, like how the, that is done in AT and T. So this will do. Um, this will have a kind of an alarm. Okay, when the so first thing what we saw they had the color uh, indication. Okay, for so yellow and red it means that there is some a problem with the network. So here they have a. Alarm system. So where you have an alarm when the network goes down, when some components go down. So how they do the um, healing is with the help of artificial intelligence. So they are programmed such that they can uh, repair themselves or they can troubleshoot themselves such that you don't have a person to go and look on what happens. So suppose we have a power supply down. Okay. So some somewhere your transformer goes. Uh, that is your transformer is bursting, okay, some kind of thing. So here, uh, in few places, I have seen that you have a healing uh, technique such that the power can be managed, can come back in within few minutes. Suppose if it is not able to do it on its own, then a person has to come and then he has to uh, repair the network or repair the uh, EV power point. So likewise, this has got an artificial intelligence program where the network can uh, monitor, that is, it can come back to uh, the working condition on its own. Okay, it finds out what is the problem and how it has to be rectified. So this is done using the artificial intelligence program. So here, the CNN will govern the network all over the globe. Okay, all over the globe, the components that are available is governed by CNN. So next one is. Uh, Nick, okay, so what they do is uh, support uh, in what happened in one place is that we had a network management agent, right? So that network management agent created so much requests that, uh, that it, it had consumed more number of network bandwidth where the management system itself went on to shadow. So it was not able to cope up with uh, the number of components that they had. So that particular uh, place, they had to shut down the uh, network management system itself. So these are the few uh, case studies that the uh, author has talked about. 
So I'll go back to the previous presentation. So this was the simple network that we saw. So we had this uh, router. So we had one router and two hubs that are being monitored by the uh, network management system. So network management system will have management agent. That management agent who will govern the different components that we have in the network. So next, this is the information that we have regarding the uh, components that we have in the network. So here we see that you have two hub and one router, right? So these information has to be uh, given to the network management system. The first one is regarding with the hub. So the title, it has got the information that is the IP address. So the IP address that we have here, 172.46.2, that is the IP address. So there is no uh, name that is given for this particular device. And the system description, 3COM link builder. So this 3COM link builder specifies the vendor from which this hub is manufactured. So 3COM is a vendor which manufactures your hub. And then the object ID. Okay, this object ID follows the structure that is given by MIB. So this 43.1.85. So this will be uh, in your MIB. So this object ID description, this cannot be changed. Okay, it is given by the vendor itself. Okay, so this system uptime indicates uh, how much time the system has been working without having any problem. Okay, without having any intervention or without having any um, failure. So how much time the system is running on? So this system has been running on for 286 days without any problem. So that is what is the system information that is stored regarding the particular hub. Okay, so this description and object ID is given by the vendor, which cannot be changed. And system uptime is the number of days or times for which the system has been working on without any problem. So this is a read-only data. That is, we cannot change it because it is given by the vendor while manufacturing the particular device. So this is about your hub. And second thing is about your router that we had, that we saw in the previous example. So this router and this hub I am talking about on your client side. So this, uh, regarding with your router, so it has got the IP address 172.16.252.1. So this is given by your network. The next one is uh, the description. Okay, so this router is manufactured by the Cisco. Okay, so this router is manufactured by the Cisco. So what is its uh, version and what is the uh, copyright, all those things. Okay, what are the software it is using, what is the version, release of the software, copyrighted things, and when it is uh, given for usage. So next one is object ID. As I told you, this is also given by the manufacturer. Okay, so this Cisco details is given here, and this system uptime indicates the number of days for which your system is being uh, system is working on without any failure. For 36 days, so this system is being uh, still performing well without any intervention. So this is regarding the system information about the router and the, uh, the hub. The so second one is we have two different hub, right? So if you see, we have two different hub here. So hub one and hub two. The next one is regarding with the information about your hub. So these two hub are manufactured by 3Com. So what are this? Or the IP address and the network mask and then network address and what is the link address. So these are used by your management system. Okay, it will query on the hub in order to get all the details. So this network management system will have to query to get any information about the system. So these are available. So next one is the port address regarding the different uh, components that we have. So this LEC 1.9, I'm uh, sorry, 1.0 and 3.9 is the LAN enumeration card. That is nothing but your um, Ethernet card that through which your um, hubs are connected. So next we have different devices that are connected with the router. And then what are the particular IP address, network mask, network address, and the link address. So these will be used by your management system. These are the different addresses 
and index is nothing but a particular id that uh, identifies the devices that are connected with your uh, in, uh, connected with your network so next one is the history of uh, snmp the so first snmp before it was into use uh, we had internet control message protocol so which governs the internet okay so the main use of it was to transfer messages between the different nodes for example even now we do right in uh, lan to check whether the particular server is working in your computer in your lab or in the client so you will ping right you just give ping and some ip address so you get the response from the uh, particular system so you know to see whether your server is still working without any problem we just ping by giving the ip address of the uh, server so this is what the you know, internet controls message protocol was being used and it was uh, used in the from the year 1970 so next came the arpanet okay arpanet is nothing but advanced research project agency network so arpanet came into usage in 1984 where it was mainly used to govern your internet to uh, take care of all the components in your internet so next after that we had simple gateway monitoring protocol so this will monitor the different uh, different kind of networks that we have in your system so these things were first in use then came the snmp so snmp is nothing but an enhancement of your simple gateway monitoring protocol so it was recommended by internet advisory board and it is in according with your osi model okay the so first thing was they did this snmp was first was not into uh, looking into the aspect of security so what they did is in version 1 which was released in 1990 by ietf internet engineering task force so version 2 they they thought that they should give some uh, enhancements by giving uh, so for giving some security uh, thing but due to some internal problems of the, those organization they couldn't give it as a security feature which was given in the version 3 okay so version 2 uh, which was depending on the osi standard that was not there so it was independent of the osi standard so next in version 3 they gave the security features that was very much essential for the snm so if your management agent is just tampered then everything goes down so security issue was the main uh, drawback uh, before the earlier versions of snmp so that was uh changed and that was came uh, was uh, given in this version 3 okay so version 3 will address security features so it was released in the uh, year 1983 the next one is internet organization and the standard so as i told you iab internet advisory board was formed in the year 1983 okay it was then changed to internet uh, architecture board Uh, internal advisory board was changed to internal architecture board in the year 1989 and then it was a uh, main the aim of iab was to govern two different bodies okay so one first one was ietf internet engineering task force and second one is irts internal research task force so what irts does okay internet research task force what it will does is it allows people to do research by forming a small group Okay, it forms small group of people. They do research on how internet can be uh, improved. Okay, that is the work of IRTS. So, like you know that you do some research, you publish uh, some papers in uh, conferences, right? Whatever knowledge that you gain through your um, theory classes, that you try to apply it on the real world by solving some problem, and then you just uh, apply for any conference or any journal paper to apply, right? that is doing some research so likewise irts does research on internet so internet research task force is the main uh, what that what the main work of irts an engineering task force will do all the network related work okay uh, introducing new uh, protocol introducing a uh, different version of the protocol that those things are done by irts and the research task force will do how internet can be improved So next, uh, we have the internet documents. 
okay rcf that you would have already heard of so request for comment so what was the use of rcf is if you do some query if i give some request it will give me some response for example uh, assume that you have a database you just do a query of finding who are the students who have got cgpa more than 8 okay you just get some response right likewise if i want to know anything about a network suppose if i want to know how to configure a uh, router okay then it will give me some response like how we have the document for java right when you go to oracle they, uh, oracle website you will be having documentation that is given for java so that is kind of thing uh, that is you give some request you get some response so likewise request for comment is just where you can get any information about the network but that was not a standard okay uh, rcf was not a standard but it was presumed to be a standard okay so like i have a system where i can uh, rely on okay i can get anything about the network on the rfc so since it was not a standard to make it as a standard we had two different uh, sub bodies of rcs which are internet standard rcs and for your information rcs sorry rfc so r uh, that is fyi for your information so what for your information is what rfc was earlier doing anything comes new okay you can know about it in fyi for your information like you have a pamphlet when you buy any product right if you buy a, a mobile or you buy a washing machine anything they give you some information something that is uh, about the device or about the component that you use about the machine that you have bought whether it is a mobile or whether it is a washing machine or a fridge anything <coughs> so likewise so for your information will give you all the details regarding the different uh, introduction to your network so next is your internet standard so rfc was assumed to be a standard where it was not then in order to make it as a standard then we have internet standard rfc so each fyi and internet standard rfc we have a unique number for every version that it is released on even if the version release, uh, release will change this fyi and the standard rfc number will not change okay so this is about your rfc so next one is internet assigned numbers authority so what this body will do is this will assign the version or numbers for the protocol so we have different versions for for fnmp itself we have three versions right version 1 version 2 version 3 so these are uh, different parameters that are required for a protocol is given by internet assigned numbers authority okay iams so what are the different parameters are that is nothing but the ip address domain name and mib all those things so this will give you information with regard with the different uh, new introductory uh, versions that comes into uh, into a network okay so next one uh, i have given in some url where you can find the sources for rfc request for comments so request for comments will help you to either uh, know about your uh, internet know different components that are available in your internet the so next one is the internet documents that we were looking on this was rfc that was i was that i was telling on so rfc is used to uh, manage that is it is used to um, govern two different things one is fyi and second one is standard for your information rfc and standard rfc so as i told you uh, for your information will have the topics that are new to okay so anything that is any protocol that is new to the uh, network anything that you want to know about that can be in your fyi you can get it from fyi for your information and standard is nothing but a protocol uh, which is used by different uh, components that we have so these are the different uh, urls for from where you can get the rf so this is how your document look like in your version 1 and version 2 of snmp so you can see that snmp management document is your root so then you have rfc 1065 rfc 1066 rfc 
and these rfc will have uh, standard and uh, for your information so this is a standard 15 in uh, concise as some mind these are the different documents that we have in fnmc okay so version 1 and version 2 so anything you want to know about the internet about the working functions of the internet you can get it from rfc request for document so it is like a three line structure so whenever uh, any changes come the standard and fyi number will remain the same okay only the version will get updated so next is the snmp model so we have three different models organization model information model and communication model so we'll see in depth of each of the thing uh, in the next class so these are the different ways in which you can have the organization model so you can have it as a two tier or you can have it as a three tier so if it is a two tier okay you will have a manager and you will have a agent remember these things that i told you on the previous class that was on i or first day i suppose first your last few days so we saw how a uh, different managers we have and different agents that work on your snmp so you have for the two tier you can have one manager or you can have multiple managers so any manager is nothing but on snmp management agent or uh, and snmp agent is nothing but the different management uh, devices that we have different managed objects in precise so objects are nothing but all the devices that we have on your network so or it can be your three tier organization where you can have a proxy also so if you are going to use a component which is out of your snmp then you can have a proxy okay that proxy server will help you to uh, manage the non snmp object also that you can see in this picture you can if snmp manager can manage snmp managed object as well as non snmp managed object through a proxy server so next um, so this is the same thing that i was talking about the two tier architecture so you have a manager and you have agent so this manager will govern the different components that we have in the network so these components are called as managed object so this was the structure that we saw so snmp manager and snmp agent so we saw the five different messages that snmp manager and agent uses in order to communicate with each other so you have three messages from the manager and two messages from the agent so the message from the manager are get request get next request set request and the messages from the agent are get response and trap okay so get response and trap are kind of a alarm kind of or a notification kind of a message that is given to the manager so this um, snmp works on your application layer of the osi model okay you have physical data link all those right so this snmp works on the application layer at the uh, last seventh layer application layer of the osi model so these are the different five messages that we have so get request get next request set request so first three messages come from the manager So a set request will be given when a manager wants to know. I told you right, a, a, a network management agent will will query on to the uh, network component. So it will have to give a get request in order to get all the details about the component. That is all the managed object. Suppose if we have a bundle of information, okay, if we, if we have an array of information, then we will give it as get next request. and set request is used to set values in your mib okay to change some values in your mib that can be done by your management agent so get response and trap are the messages that come from your uh, agent okay get response is the response that your agent gives for whatever request is given by the manage management agent and trap is like an alarm okay it generates when the network goes down or when, as i told you uh, the author was telling about the different uh, management system that we have in real world so you can have this alarm kind of thing when the network component goes down okay so that is given as a 
crap. So these things, uh, yes, we saw this managed object, right? So each object will have an instance and a type. So how we refer the instance of the object is with the help of the IP address. Okay, object instance is referred as having but IP address because each object here object means the components that we have in the network. Okay, components are different devices that we have in the network. So each component will have type and instance. So instance is nothing but IP address and the type is nothing but uh, name and the syntax and the encoding. So name is nothing but uh, you saw that previous slide, right? So I'll just give you this slide. So you have this name. Okay, so this router has got a name router one dot uh, dot edu. So this is the name for this particular object. So likewise, each object will have its name and it will follow the uh, standard syntax that is given in ASN, abstract syntax notation, and it will follow the encoding, basic encoding that we saw for ASN. So this is how the system is governed. Okay, every component will have object and it will have a instance. So instance is nothing but the IP address and object type will have name, syntax and encoding. Suppose if we have multiple objects, okay, then if the object type are same, okay, if you are having uh, five different hubs, okay, five hubs, then the hub ID alone will change, hub instance alone will change, that is, their IP address alone will change. So in a previous uh, example, we saw we have two different uh, hub, right? So only the IP address of the hub will change. So manufacturer of the hub will be, might be the same. Okay, so we saw that it was manufactured by three com vendors. Okay, so three com vendors would have manufactured the particular two hubs that we were seeing. So these are only the object instances need to be different. So this is the name. Uh, that we saw, so I'll stop with this. We'll continue in the next class. If you have any doubt, you can ask me. If you have any doubt, if you have any doubt, you can ask me or you can just.